Hi everyone, this is Emily Wickham, and I want to share some thoughts with you about what is coming next. Of course, I don't know exact details. 2020 has been an unbelievably unprecedented year, and I think so many people are just wanting life to get back to normal. Personally, I don't think that that's really ever going to happen. I don't think we're ever going to go back to how things used to be. And like I said, I don't know exactly what's coming. And um, I haven't compiled information about everything that's out there. But what I did do was tune in recently to the Pope as he spoke for the United Nations. They had their General Assembly this past September, and he spoke for about, I think, 25 or 30 minutes, and I thought, well, I'm just going to listen and hear what he has to say. And so I want to share some of those topics with you. Before I do that, let me say this. The Bible tells us about a coming tribulation, and Jesus described this time in Matthew 24, 21 as a great tribulation, such as has not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever will. However, leaders who are part of the United Nations foretell a different future. They talk about things that sound so good, so nice, so loving and really perfect. But do not be deceived. True peace and security cannot come to this world until the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, returns to reign on this earth. I listened recently, as I said, to Pope Francis's talk at the United Nations. It was their 75th session. And let me just list out some of the topics he discussed, it really was quite comprehensive and interesting. It's kind of a lengthy list, but just bear with me because it's very educational to hear the things he was talking about. Uh, the Pope brought up a COVID-19 vaccine and health care. He talked about the poor and refugees, uh, migrants and humanitarian crises, nationalism, new ways of work economic matters and financial institutions. He talked about inequality between super rich people and permanently poor people, fiscal justice, artificial intelligence. And then I found this very interesting. He mentioned a change of direction and also a more fraternal and compassionate society, new ethics as in working together, justice and the common good, uh, he talked about us uh, really focusing on our common home and common project, multinaturalism, limits of self-sufficiency. I, I really am hearing uh, thoughts that lend themselves to just a one world government, a one world order where you know, it sounds like this wonderful, fabulous place where everybody is together, just working together. It, it sounds great, but <laughs> do not be deceived. The Pope continued talking about a culture of waste, uh, the environmental crisis, climate change, social crisis, explosive weapons, the arms race, nuclear military technology, nuclear disarmament, the desire for power and control in today's society. He brought up sexual trafficking and other types of trafficking, child abuse, child pornography, abortion, education, the family, and the disintegration of it. The promotion of women, threats to peace and security, such as poverty, epidemics, and terrorism, and more. He talked about reducing international sanctions. So this all is part of his talk. And, and I encourage you to listen for yourself. It's on YouTube and you can hear exactly what he said. But uh, all of these topics were part of his speech. And I want to just close out thoughts on what he said with a direct quote. He said, let us use the United Nations to transform our current challenge 
into an opportunity so that together, once and for all, we can build the future we want, end quote. Now, as I said, all of this sounds fantastic. And if I closed my eyes and just listened to these plans for humanity's future without knowing what the Bible teaches, then I might think that a loving, fair, and perfect world is up ahead. But again, do not be deceived. I don't recall hearing one mention about God, certainly not about the Lord Jesus Christ, in anything the Pope said. And I think even that quote I just read, it's not a reliance on God to bring about good things in our world. It's a reliance on the United Nations. It's a reliance on ourselves. So that's not going to work. And the thing about deception is that deceivers don't come out and just say, hey, hello, I'm getting ready to deceive you. No, they mix good with the bad. They mix lies with truth. And behind it all is Satan, the father of lies. The Bible tells us Satan is the God of this world and he has deceived people. He has blinded them. But Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And John 14, 6 says he is the way and the truth and the life and that no one can come to the father except through Jesus. Now, sinful Man wants to live life on his own terms. And non-Christian people desire to leave God out of the picture. But I think we can see, especially from this year, that that ideology just does not work. There's no way we can leave God out of the picture. He's our creator. He created each and every human being. And mankind will not and cannot create a utopia in this world. As I said, the Pope suggested we rely on the United Nations as the catalyst for us to build the future we want together. And in all reality, that's going to be a disaster because without the Lord, there's nothing good. There's no hope and there's no true life. God created every human being, as I said, and then he sent his only beloved son, to die on the cross for our sins. By faith in Christ, we can be forgiven and brought into an eternal relationship with God. I did that when I was 10 years old. I knelt down by my bed and I asked Jesus to be my savior. I was a child. I didn't understand everything, but I knew without Jesus, I had no hope. I knew he was the one who could save me from my sins. And so that's what I did. And God, by his grace, has grown me and sanctified me over these years. And I could not live this life without Jesus. He is the one who loves me more than anyone. He is my savior, my Lord, my friend. He is faithful and true. He never, ever leaves me or forsakes me. And if he is not your savior, I invite you to place your faith in him today. Jesus is coming back soon. Let's not be troubled. I think about John 14, 1, where Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And so we want to be aware of what is going on, but we don't want to be downcast and just focused on that and depressed by it. We want to be looking up for our Savior, our Lord, Jesus Christ, who's coming back soon. Thanks so much for taking time to tune in. And if this is your first visit to my channel, I hope you'll subscribe and tap the bell for notifications. I really appreciate this opportunity to share thoughts on Bible prophecy with you. If you have any comments or questions, please leave those in the comment section below and Every like, every comment is great because I think it helps get this message out to more and more people. So thank you for being here. And until next time, blessings to you in Christ.